Hello friends, Masha here. Welcome back to my channel. And with that, welcome back to our Tarot Trumps Throughout History feature. Today we are at Arcanum 14, Temperance card. The last virtue represented in our standard tarot. And by standard tarot, I mean a deck with the structure of 22 trumps and 56 minors. you know from my previous features on uh, justice and strength cards i very much love my virtue cards and tarot well along with the celestials right i love my star sun and moon cards as well and i always pay attention to those cards especially before acquiring a new deck as we discussed before, whether you follow the main traditions, right, uh, Tarot de Marseille, Rider Waite Smith, or Thor's lineages, there are three out of four cardinal virtues represented in those what I call standards, right, standard packs of cards, and they are, of course, justice, strength of fortitude, and temperance, which, of course, sometimes get renamed. Now, every time I I talk about virtues and tarot, I love bringing out my beautiful Montaigne Laden spell, the Taroki, which uh, is a 50 card Taroki, very unique uh, tarot with utmost beautiful Renaissance style images, which I absolutely love. But yes, this tarot actually, this Taroki actually has all four cardinal virtues represented. So here we are with the familiar justice, strength of fortitude, temperance, and prudence being the fourth of the cardinal virtues. And as I mentioned in my previous justice and fortitude videos, while many assign biblical connotations and references to cardinal virtues, they actually were first meant to be philosophical and are attributed to Plato and also to Aristotle, who was a student of Plato. And with that, with Plato and Aristotle, we are with the Greek philosophy philosophy of the 300s BC Greece. So with the virtues, I follow just that, virtues being the ethics, the fundamental ethics described in classical philosophy originating in Greece, and those fundamental ethics, they contain core values, core principles for us to live by. Now, while not entirely relevant to this video, I still wanted to mention, since it's the last video on uh, tarot virtues with the temperance being the last virtue in tarot, that uh, that we also know that the later three more virtues, theological virtues, were added later, much, much later by Saint Paul. And uh, in... Uh, the Montaigne Taroki, and as we also see in Visconti Madrona, these additional virtues are faith, uh, faith, uh, hope, and uh, charity. Also, in the earliest illuminated tarot, the cardinal virtues were grouped together and then they were next to each other in a sequence, where in our later tarot, the virtues are spread out in, with two cards in between, right? So we have Arcanum 8 as a virtue, then 9, 10, Hermit Will, then we have uh, Arcanum 11, which is 40 force or strength and then we have headman and death following it and in two cards we are with our temperance the feature for this video today of course same numbering follows in rws it's just more the justice and the strength they were switched so we have 8 11 and 14 
All right, so now let us have an up close look at the portrayal of the virtue of temperance beginning from the 15th century, illuminated, beautiful illuminated terrors and progressing all the way through into the 21st century. So today we commence this historic segment with the temperance from the one of the earliest 15th century illuminated Ercole d'Este Tarocchi and so-called Charles VI Terror. And uh, these two cards are just stunning in my view. Charles VI figure is painted here with a scalloped spider web resembling hello, which used to be a symbol representing virtues during the medieval times. And while this large card, while this temperance belongs to the Visconti Sforza Tiero, as this card was the one that was painted by a later artist, I am featuring it after these two beauties. Now, with these cards originating from as early as before, for mid, mid, maybe slightly, well, yeah, this particular card, a little later, mid, uh, mid 1400s, uh, these cards, they set a model what the temperance would look like in Tierra for the next six centuries, with minor deviation of, deviations, of course, but mainly with the temperance figure usually depicted as a young woman shown pouring liquid from one uh, vessel into the other as uh, we will also see for most part uh, those pictures they would have handles but sometimes they would be represented as cups and the woman the young maiden herself in those cards she will be either seated especially in italian decks and of course standing in marseille tiero in marseille tiero we'll also see her temperance transforming into this winged ed angel and she will be shown more leaning over to the left so yes this tradition continues into the 15th century woodblock uh, uh, rosenwald and budapest sheets now this card the budapest one um, uh, the original of it only has the top part surviving and this is of course the restored version that i'm showing here and uh, these two temperance cards, they are just holding their uh, vessels in, uh, in their opposite hands. And we will see this variability, right, uh, in Italian tarot especially. Also, as you can see in these cards, the temperance uh, cards numbered uh, six and seven, and this is due to, as I mentioned before, in the old Italian decks, the virtue cards, they were clustered together after key five, the Pope card in the earlier Italian decks. And uh, now, this uh, is a uh, charming uh, temperance from uh, the 15th century Minchiate Florentina in its restoration. And here the vessel is on the ground, also the feature that is present in uh, some, some of the historic tiaros. Now to Paris, where the Olympics are taking place right now. I actually love uh, practicing predictive readings, predictive tarot readings on the subject of which team or which person would win in a particular sport competition. Love doing those readings, not relevant for this video though. But so yes, we are here with three cards from the mid 1600s Paris. And how different are uh, these three from each other? And, and they just... So here, the first one, we are with the anonymous tier of Paris. And of course, here we 
observe a deviation from what we have seen so far as um, this temperance only holds one jug onto which she is holding with both of her hands and she is pouring water onto the ground into the fire you see flames of fire here into the fire that uh, she seemingly is trying to put out and then here we are with uh, one of the popular Marseille Tierros, earliest Marseille Tierros, Jean Noble Tierro de Marseille. We are back with the familiar figure of a uh, woman pouring the liquid from one pitcher into the other. Only that in Marseille Tiero, we in Marseille Tiero tradition, we see that uh, temperance as a virtue is transformed into an angel as she is given um, angel wings. And then here we are with Jacques Viville, and uh, we see that uh, this temperance is given a scepter, and she's only using, only holding onto one uh, jug from with one of her hands, uh, from which she's pouring onto the other one on the ground. Also, that unique feature of this tarot, of the Viville tarot, and of course, uh, the Brussels Rondex later on that uh, there is a ribbon here in front of temperance on which we read in the reverse soul pharma which translates only fame after death only fame advances and this uh, ribbon with a chain uh, links uh, this temperance to Petrarca's poem called E Triumphi the Trumps in which uh, temperance or fame triumphing over death, right? It comes after the death cards in Tiero and it triumphs after, uh, over the death cards. So yeah, they're the three from about around the same time, around mid-1650s Paris. But we do see the same pattern, as I mentioned, Brussels Rouen, right? In the later Belgium, later 17th century Tiero in the Baudet Tiero. This one goes actually one between. All right, so um, if you're familiar with Vandenboer, I haven't got it here with me today. Oh, well, I, I do have it, but not uh, haven't repaid it for this video. You do see the same pattern in, of course, in uh, later, century later, uh, towards the end of 18th century, uh, Vandenboer Tierra. But this is the beautiful engraving, later hand-colored, by an perhaps unknown artist. Um, this is the beautiful Giuseppe temperance card from the beautiful Giuseppe Mitelli Tarakino. And this version that I have is handmade on the most delightful late paper with the Rivaltini border. So it's like folded over borders, right? From the back, folded over and glued by hand. One of the most delightful decks in my collection. And the colors uh, and the engraving itself is just very, very delicate. I do have an extensive video on uh, this incredibly exquisite Mitele Taroki. Now, these two cards I have today from the 18th century, Jean Payen and Nicolas Convertiero. So they are the representations of type one and type two Tierra de Marseille. Being a Terra de Marseille lover, I of course find both of them very appealing and uh, these two cards, they continue Terra de Marseille tradition with the winged temperance uh, as we have seen in this restored noble. But uh, in especially in this type two and uh, later on Nicholas Conver, what we see that addition of the red little dot or red flower, which is positioned on the forehead of temperance. Much later, French occultist Eliphas uh, Levy linked uh, this flower in the forehead of the temperance to the sun. 
Another distinctive feature of Arcanum 14 in Tierra de Marseille is that our figure here is leaning slightly towards the left. Right, so she's kind of gazing down a little uh, to, over to the left and she's leaning over to the left as well. And uh, that for me uh, shows uh, directionality, allows for directional readings, but also uh, her leaning over to the left uh, kind of slightly prioritizes the left side, the yin energy, and with that creativity, contemplation, reflection. But look, uh, I will talk more about how I understand uh, this arcanum in my temperance favorite favorites video in in a few days' time. Next, um, these two examples are from the 19th century. So this is Besançon, Jacques Abjur, Gatero de Besançon, and this is the Gassman, uh, Tiero, Francois Gassman, Swiss Tiero. So Besançon area of France, very close to Switzerland, right, and the Swiss Tiero. I only did a video on Jacques Abjurg uh, just a couple of days ago and this tarot is very quickly becoming my everyday carry tarot and the backs are just absolutely delightful, those marbled backs. And uh, I very much appreciate uh, if you kind of, you, well, you've seen the previous cards before, but uh, this one, this card features uh, more than usual uh, Im, uh, embellished pictures, which to me is a nice detail, nice fresh restoration, and of course, uh, with this Gassman tarot produced by Yves Renaud, the colors in this tarot are absolutely delightful. Moving on. So here we are, moving with two, right, with uh, two uh, Italian tiaros, both later 19th century, Piedmontese tiaro and Milanese, different regions of Italy. This is Edoardo Dotti tiaro, and this particular temperance, the Dotti one, is so peaceful and measured, and the colors are soft and almost pastel green here. I adore this card. But as you can see, these uh, two temperance cards follow the Marseille tradition. So these two temperances are winged, although the dotty one has some headpieces there added as well. Then we are with similar period, the late 19th century, but now though with the occult, with one of the earlier occult tiaros, of course, this is Oswald verse tiaros, the earlier version of a dating 1889, very Marseille style uh, card visually with the Hebrew letter Nun added to reference Kabbalah. Then, of course, as you would expect, Featuring the classic historic decks, um, here is key 14 from the 20th century Wade Smith Terror. And in this card, we see a male angel with one foot on the ground with uh, and the other dipped in the water, linking this figure to Archangel Michael, who in book of the Book of Revelation is described standing with one foot on land and another in the sea with the rainbow on his head where in RWS we see the sun shining from his forehead creating this uh, halo around his head but where the rainbow is concerned here we are with the tarot, uh, with this card, which, which actually predates Thor's tarot by 20 years when it comes to its publication. So uh, this is 
temperance from uh, Shabosoy Tiero, also known as uh, Tiero of the Occult Energies, in this restoration and this republishing uh, title by Giordano Berti of Renascimento Italian Style Art. But here we are with the angel who is uh, doing his magic and creating the rainbow, right? Pouring the rainbow from one picture into the other. And uh, now to the last card, which will finish our excursion into the progression of temperance cards and tarot. So this is, of course, 20th century thought, which was, I trust from memory, originally published in 1969, right? So, uh, yeah, 1969. And, uh, of course, we know a uh, very classic tarot with the wonderful artwork by Lee. Lady Frida Harris under the guidance of Alistair Crowley. In here we do see different Hebrew letter attributions. So Nun in uh, the occult tarot, worth tarot, and Nun of course was the letter that ass was assigned to temperance by a uh, French occultist Elif Eliphas Levy, where the golden dawn, uh, they changed that and they assigned uh, Hebrew letter Mel to temperance card and thoughts also this card is renamed art and uh, as we can see it's packed with uh, much much of symbology as we would expect from thoughts tarot alchemy galore in this card also but then this temperance uh, and well, temperance in general, really, like all temperances, uh, temperance card, what I'm trying to say, is the alchemist of a tarot deck. So um, these are the historic representations I have prepared for you. Now let's have a look at a few of the contemporary iterations of the temperance card in a tarot. So here, a uh, rainbow is uh, tempered with in the Gaian tarot. And uh, such a serene, beautiful card we have in the tarot of the mystical moments. Here, we are with the crown walking uh, between on walking on a little green path between fire and ice touching both and um, the idea of this middle path right so me walking the middle path continues in uh, the well middle path card <laughs> temperance card from the wonderful buddha tiara which is one of my favorites for sure then uh, happy we here with Happy, the Egyptian god of the Nile, Nile River and Floods, uh, representing Key 14 in the Egyptian Votiero. And uh, this is the temperance card from uh, Fyodor Pavlov Tiero. And we see here that the artist is intentionally depicted more masculine figure here. And this temperance card exuding this gentle uh, masculinity. Now, this is more of a zoomed image of temperance from the Ehrenberg Tiero. And uh, this one is from one of my most treasured handmade decks, a beautiful minimalistic temperance on the gold foil background from the Visconti Homage Tiero. And the last card for today is from my own deck, my deck featuring my living and departed darling pets. Um, uh, this card is inspired by my childhood cat Kata, who I rescued when I was seven or eight. And Kata was a great example of temperance, a calm yet alert, yet very balanced 
cat i here for this card i placed my kata in new zealand the beautiful country known for its purity of nature and also known for its beautiful wines so my cat here is given little wings because she is long departed and uh, she is tempering red wine my intention was beautiful new zealand pinot noir in this image I hope so much that you enjoyed that up close look at the whopping 31 representations of the temperance card in tarot. I will be back in a few days, in a couple of days, with uh, the episode on my favorite, on my favorite individual temperance cards uh, from a number of decks. There will be more than five this time around. I love this card. And also in that upcoming video, where I uh, will be sharing with you my top temperance cards. I will also be sharing how I see, how I understand and how I interpret Arcanum 14 cards in my readings. But if you're watching this video today, on the day of the appearance of this video on YouTube, I will be back even sooner with a live conversation with Marco Benedetti. I'm very excited. I haven't done a live since our last live conversation with Marco. Marco. But yes, Marco and I, Marco, of course, as you know, one of my favorite card makers based in Rome, and we will be back to chat about his most recent uh, creation, his most recent uh, Visconti Madrona Tiero, and uh, this Tiero is very exciting. It's been completed by Marco. If you know about Madrona, you know that the deck is not complete, so this version version is 90 cards, the whole 90 cards, and they have been filled out, completed, uh, constructed by Marco Benedetti. And uh, I will ask Marco about virtues too, because this little treasure has all seven of them. But until then, I'm sending much love to you all. I hope to catch you live this Friday for Northern Hemisphere. I'll link a link Saturday morning uh, or early Saturday morning for us in the Southern Hemisphere. So I hope to see you then or in my next video. Ciao!